I don't think there's anything that's certain in the world at the moment. There's a lot that can change, there's a lot that can happen. And I think that is in the back of your mind every time I'm going into work. Adult trauma, ETA five minutes. Got an assault coming in. He's stabbed multiple times. Five-year-old hit by a car, dragged for three metres, degloved the right side of their scalp. Code red. They're now saying partial amputation. A traumatic cardiac arrest. This is just disastrous. Travel by cow. Does that make that up? Oh, it's a proper day today, isn't it? St George's, London, one of Britain's busiest a &E departments, under more pressure than ever. What are you doing? It does sometimes feel like a battlefield, and it feels like a losing battle at times as well. Oh, you need to calm yourself down. I have ten traumas and absolutely no space. 25-year-old jump from a third-floor balcony. This is the point where we can make a difference. Thank you, everybody. Place where life. Best place to make friends. <laughs> A and E. Love and loss. Scariest thing in my life. I thought I lost it. Unfold every single day. A life is not just a singular thing. Things that happen to you have a huge effect on the people around you as well. You scare me so much. You know that. Yeah. All the patients you're about to see were treated in just one 24-hour period. I see behaviour every day that reaffirms my belief in the inherent goodness of people. It's all a bit of a shock, isn't it? And I think I'm incredibly fortunate to work in that environment. It's a lot to take in. It's the love of my life. Is Peyton. Oh, we can pull it. Tricky is central. Keep your head still. Take deep breaths in and out for me. When you're ill and you are scared and you are in a place that you don't know, you need someone to be able to provide comfort. I'm sorry. Almost maternal care, I suppose. You're doing so well. There are lots of people who are really nervous, and other people will be quite verbal and aggressive. Sarah, just call, can you call the police? If someone's drunk or they're under the influence of drugs, you respond however you feel is appropriate. You smoke. How many do you smoke a day? I suppose it's the tone of voice that you use, like a mother <laughs> telling a child what to do. Hello, St George's ED. OK, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Thank you. Thank you, bye. Adult male trauma call, 20 minutes. A 34-year-old man is being rushed to St George's after being assaulted on a night out. The trauma is a bad trauma. A head injury. When somebody comes in with a head injury, you know that time is brain, basically. So you need to identify if there is a bleed on the brain. There's only so much space where the blood can go. Once you start bleeding beyond you know, that cavity, you start pushing brain tissue. When you start pushing brain tissue, you start causing brain damage. The man lives with his parents, who are on their way to the hospital. It was his living day with all the friends we used to work with. He said, I'm not going to be that late. But he didn't come back home. I rang him. He didn't pick up. And then after the third one, the police has picked up the phone. They said he's unconscious and he's got a head injury. A 
as a mom. I was just thinking and praying I would do anything. If he's okay. <laughs> Stay nice and still, we'll do all the work for you. This is Hitty. Hitty is 34 years old and the CD was assaulted by an unknown number of assailants. He was seen to be knocked to the floor and go unconscious for an unknown amount of time. There's an occipital head injury and he had four milligrams of ondansetron and immobilised, as you see. Um, he does have a medical history of DBT, for which is taken with Roxibam. Deep vein thrombosis, or DVTs as we call them, is a clot in one of your deep veins and they're treated with blood thinners. The problem is alcohol makes the drug more potent, which means that you're more likely to bleed in the context of even a small head injury. If we could get the blocks off and then we'll take him off the scoop and then Mo, if you could do primary survey, Tom, if you can get IV access and do some blood. Hey, I'm just going to hold your, your head and your neck just for a moment. Okay, I just need to check your eyes, okay? okay? Oh! Just give me a minute, let me see your eyes. So it's dilated, reactive on the right side with six millimeter, and on the left side it's three millimeter, also reactive. They are unequal. Unequal pupils is usually a sign that there is a significant bleed on the brain that might be compression or pushing of one of the nerves that supply the eye. So we'll definitely need a head and neck. Uh, I just wanted to talk about the update for his condition. Um, so we don't know yet, basically. I mean, because your ambulance guards assessed it as possibly life-changing, so well, that's still stick. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How much have you had to drink today? Um, three, four, five beer. Okay. Thirty-four-year-old Hitin was assaulted on a night out with friends. Doctors are concerned about a potential brain injury. <laughs> Shit. You need to stay still for no, us, sorry, I'm okay? Sorry, I'm sorry. The collar needs to stay on. Okay. You shouldn't be moving okay. your neck, okay? okay? Some people can become very agitated when they have a head injury. It is almost like um, being intoxicated. No, no, leave that on, leave that on, hit in, hit in, leave that on. Sorry. Leave that on. And when you're looking after patients, no matter what age they are, you always feel a little bit like a parent looking after them. The scan's ready for him now, so we get around for a CT head, and then he's on a trauma mattress. Ready? Let's go. Ready, steady, slide. Okay, if you don't need to do anything, like I say, just keep very, very still. He didn't always really live at home. There are a lot of people that have not left home in our culture. Okay, you need to keep your head still, mate. Otherwise, it's not going to work. If he's any problems as well, they can all, I always fall on to say, oh, mum or dad, <laughs> this gone wrong and what can I do now? So at least, at least they've got someone. Okay. I always tell Hidden when, when he goes out and I always tell him, say, text me where you are and what you're doing and what time you're coming home. Well, he lives under my roof, so I would like at least everyone who got the house rules. Hitton, just keep very still. Put your hand down, don't move. He's not as a party anymore, but he likes to go out with his friends. No, he's just... Put your hands down. Sometimes he had to stay out and didn't know where he was. If he says, I'm coming, and he doesn't get here in our time, and you just panic, don't you? I'm lying in bed, awake. And my husband keeps saying, you know, they're grown up now, you know. But I said, well, for you may be different than me, 
I said, I can't sleep until they put the key in door. And then I know he's home. You need to stay still, mate. You hear that? You're gonna keep like that? You can't be moving around in the scanner because then we can't get a good enough image. It is really important to get somebody scanned as quickly as possible because the quicker you identify that there's an injury, the quicker you can do something about it. The longer a brain goes without oxygen, the worse the outcome is. And you're gonna go to sleep now, okay? Because we're gonna do a scan and you're gonna be really still. Okay? So let's just not disturb him. So you think he's behaving like that because of his neurological thing? Or... I think he's, yeah, well, just a bit weird. Yeah. You might think, oh, they're just drunk, but actually they could have a potentially life-threatening head injury and you have to be really careful to not miss that. Cool. Thank you very much. No problems. All good. All done. Love. Yeah, no, that's exactly how I'd make it, though. You put milk on first? No, you do that, don't you? Yeah, how do you do that? Do you not find when you pour it that it's just white? Yeah, and nice. then it goes brown. No, it's got the... <laughs> <laughs> Lightsabers. Lightsabers. <laughs> 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 Are they going to take? Just a bit you don't need. Is it going to be from my brain? No. <laughs> 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 Hello, Amy, Reese, St George's. Medical trauma. An eight year old girl is being rushed to hospital after suffering two epileptic seizures. Three, three, one, oh. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Pediatric priority call, 15 minutes. Her mother, Monica, is travelling with her in the ambulance. Kitty hadn't been well that morning. I looked over at Kitty. I thought, you still look like you've got a fever. And sure enough, she, she collapsed and she started having a seizure. She was coming off the first seizure, but then she went straight into another one, which alarm bells just started ringing that that's just not normal for her. We then found out that her temperature was extremely high by the time the paramedics arrived. We see seizures pretty frequently, um, but uh, it is overall, it is frightening. If they are back to back and it is out of the ordinary for that particular child, it means that there may be some precipitating factor that is putting the child out of a normal kind of normal pattern of seizures that needs to be identified. Well done. Kitty or Katerina, she's eight years old. Yeah. Suffers from polymicrogyria. What? Polymicrogyria. Okay. Okay. And she gets seizures? She does have seizures. She was, she's um, diagnosed as epileptic as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the seizures may come on at any time, but they're more likely to happen when she has pyrexia as well. Okay. She started to spike temperatures last night from about 7 o'clock. Um, Mum has controlled the temperatures with alternating ibuprofen and calpol throughout mm. the night. Her latest temperature was 40 when we did it. 
Polymicrogyra means a kitty's brain didn't develop as it should have um, inside the womb. It's a gene from myself and a gene from her father that combined um, they create polymicrogyra. Hello. Hello Hi. there. My Hi. name is Bester Kamnik, Hello. Doctors. So, how often does she get seizures? Um, full tonic clonic yeah. mainly when she's got um, something going on, infection. Okay. Kitty was diagnosed at two and a half. They pretty much said to us, she'll most likely never walk. She'll most probably never talk. Um, she might even need tube feed um, at some point. Is it all right just to see? Is she able to open her eyes now or no? She's probably fine. Kitty. Kitty. I remember being very calm during the whole meeting, but as soon as I left that room, the first thing I went to do was throw up. I just felt sick to my stomach that my child could have any sort of condition that would affect her for the rest of her life. She knows her name, she knows um, how old she is, okay. um, but she also has selective mutism, so she'll refuse to talk oh, okay. to strangers. Strangers, probably she's not going to talk to me. <laughs> probably not, probably okay. not. If there are rare syndromes, we probably have read about them in textbooks, but we don't have a practical exposure to that particular, those syndromes. Often parents know more than we do. She complained of having pains in her tummy. Mm. Um, I asked her to point with one finger to where it was, and mm. she pointed to her belly button. Central, yeah. Every seizure could potentially be life-threatening, so we need to get this temperature down to normal levels. If the fever is not getting better, it may suggest a more sinister cause, such as septicemia. We're going to have to pop a little needle in her arm as well, cannula. Okay. Okay. The seizures can be anything from a few weeks apart to a few months apart. It's okay, baby. It's okay. 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 With every seizure, she doesn't stop breathing completely, but she does go purple. Her oxygen levels go down really, really fast. It's okay. Mm -hmm. It's all right. Look at me. It's all Look at me. Right. Look at me. Yeah. You just think they'll stop breathing any time now, and and they'll die. <laughs> no, it's okay. That's it. Squeeze my fingers. That's it. Well done. Good girl. A good girl. Always back of my head. Whenever she's ill, I always think, is this the day I'm going to lose my child? Is it still hurting here? Is it still hurting here? OK, Kitty, I'm going to just Put a little prick on your finger. Eight-year-old Kitty has had two seizures. Doctors are concerned her persistent high temperature could trigger a third. Okay. Oh, oh, it's okay. Right, well it's okay. done. It's okay. I've always wanted to look after children. That's why I went to work as a nanny as soon as I left secondary school. I think because I had worked as a nanny, I thought it was all going to be very easy being a mum. There we go. You're such a brave girl. There you are. Aren't you? Kitty was a wonderful baby. She didn't cry very much, and everything was, was, was amazing. But then she didn't start keeping up with the milestones. Right, Kitty, I'm just going to open your eyes. She didn't roll over as soon as they expect them to. She didn't sit up. Um, and there were many times when she choked on food. Uh, they started getting concerned at that point. Is it hurting anywhere? Can you show me with your finger? One finger. Show me where it hurts. Oh, I think someone's shy because I'm here. <laughs> is that what it is? 
What was the temperature? 39. <clears throat> Temperature's now at 39. On oh, the good young girl. OK, um... She probably has some parts among, uh, yeah. That's so gang -gang. she... What do you think, it's some cow or something like that? High temperatures can cause further seizures. By reducing the temperature, we can allow the child to get adequate uh, amount of oxygen to the brain and heart. I know she's got a background of seizures, etc., but it looks like a defined as complex uh, febrile convulsion, in that okay, sense. Yeah. It's not a simple one. Yeah. So I think she will be observed for a while. Besnik needs to consult with paediatric specialists about the next stage of Kitty's treatment. I thought all my achievements, everything I'm trying to do in life, you always think you're doing it for yourself. But once you have children, you feel that Everything you're trying to achieve, everything you're trying to do is for them. I have two boys, uh, one is 17, another one is 14. They become probably more important than yourself. When I sometimes feel down, I just think about my children and my wife as well. So that keeps me going. They're gonna give you some more medicine to bring your temperature down. Okay. And once they do that, you'll start feeling a lot better. All right? And then you can just sleep. Because you've had two seizures today, darling. Are you scared? Her first word was mama, which, as every mother, I was very proud of. And then the first time Kitty used a three-word sentence, um, she was just over seven years old. Sorry. It's a very long time to wait for your child to speak. Can you sleep more? Yeah. You sleep too. <clears throat> you sleep. just before Kitty was 10 months. I actually went into a postnatal depression. I had um, had thoughts of suicide. Um, I had thought of killing myself because I couldn't cope with the situation. It did take six months on medication for me to be able to feel normal again. It was very lonely, um, very lonely time. She was constantly in hospital. Um, she was having seizures. I remember feeling absolutely exhausted all the time. Having a second child, um, I guess put even more pressure on me um, as a mother and as a homemaker. And our marriage wasn't great at the time as it was. I, I knew that we just couldn't go on as a married couple. No, I should not have to go through all this. Your left arm up. Left arm. Left arm. Can you move it up? Me. Yeah. Okay. Now down. Can you squeeze it? My finger. Okay. The other one. You squeeze it. Okay. Hitin was violently assaulted in the street. Initial scans show there is no damage to his neck, but doctors are still waiting to find out if there's a bleed on his brain. It's the right side, isn't it? His eye. Mm. No bleeding. No, I can't see anything obvious. 
He has some rocks to so we have to be careful. Mm -hmm. He needs a secondary. Rivroxban is one of the new age blood thinners that we use to treat DVTs. When you consume alcohol and you're already on a blood thinner, it makes your blood very, very thin. And so you need to be aware of the risks that you're taking when you drink excessively. I need to examine you quickly. Do you have any pain in your body? It was last year. He, he come home and he went to bed. And he doesn't like taking any days off from the work. He doesn't like to be sick. He never goes to the doctor. He doesn't want to go to doctors. <laughs> then he will start uh, coughing, coughing blood. So I rang my husband and I said, look, there is something wrong with Hidden. So I said, you have to come now and take him to the A&E. Hidden. Can you just open your eyes? Good. Look at me. Can you tell me what happened? OK. And he was in a lot of pain in that I couldn't even describe it, how he couldn't even sit, he couldn't even lie down, he couldn't even do anything. And they found out he's got clot in his lung. They have to check his blood every week. After a couple of months, he came back from Cardiff one day. He was limping. He said, oh, he's hurting again, Mum. It's really bad. And he went to the hospital. And they said, oh, it's got the blood clot. Come back. Let me check your back. Mm. OK. Up till now, they've not found out what caused it. It is scary because he's healthy, he's fit. And for him to have this, pretty much a shock. The medication is on now. He has to restrict himself, drinking. He has to swallow that bitter pill, as one says, and accept that he's going to be on this medication for his well, for his well and good. Hello, Amy. Can I help? Good night. I'll see you later. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Do you know what? I really like refrigerated crisps. Why? <laughs> like, if they've been in the fridge, they're so nice. Do you think you might be a little bit delirious at the moment? No. <laughs> I've only had paracetamol <laughs> and ibuprofen. Oh, you know, like dirty chicken. Dirty chicken? You know, like chicken chop chicken. Yeah. Apparently, I don't know where I saw it. There's a chicken chop that's called Dirty Birds. <laughs> Oh, that is brilliant. That is the best name for a chicken show. Was it what I saw? Someone put it on Facebook. It was a kebab van called Jason's Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it feels like when I straighten it, the skin on the outside is like lifting up. I can, it's like tightening around my. Sophie. 11-year-old Sophie has come to A&E with her mum after shutting her finger in a door. Hello. Hello. Come in. Great. Right. Part was up with Sophie, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And mum? Yes, hello. Mum, have a seat. Sure, thank you. Um, Sophie, I'm Sarah. OK, I'm one of the emergency consultants. I've heard all about this finger. What did you do? <laughs> oh, dear. It, someone slammed it. It does look nasty. Is it very sore? A little bit. <laughs> because it's stoic, I can tell by the colour of your face. She does netball on a Monday, gymnastics on a Tuesday, dance on a Wednesday, Thursday's free, Friday's free, and then dance twice on a Saturday and then hockey on a Sunday. It's swelled up yeah. and we put ice on it, but it hasn't gone down. OK. It's just stayed the same. Just stayed the same. She just will try everything and anything, and I, I, I really admire that. I love the fact that she is so kind of gung-ho and she just 
go, gives it a try and goes for it. Sometimes, if, if, if there is quite a significant swelling and a lot of pain, mm. we may have to do a small yes, puncture. And all you have to do is put your hand down flat like that, OK, while Shafi puts a couple of injections in there. OK. Yeah? It's going to be OK. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Trust yeah. me? We had plenty of pink stuff in the early days, and then as her personality began to emerge pretty soon, I realised she wasn't really that sort of girl. <laughs> I'm nervous. I don't like... I'm scared, I know, darling, I'm scared but of needles. It's pretty normal to be scared of needles at the age of 11, darling. I'd never been to A&E with any of the children, never had any cause to. They're not ill very often. I'm very, very fortunate. Keep touching wood. Do they hurt a lot? No, it'll be like a, you know, like a pimple. Is it like getting my ears It won't bit? hurt as much as shutting your finger in the door. Could you open your eyes for me? Mum says, yeah. Hi, I'm Sabi. I'm one of the doctors. Yes, hello. Um, we have done a CT scan. There's no break in the skull, there's no bleed in the brain. OK. But I understand that he's on Revroxaban. Mm. He is, yeah. So I would prefer that he stays just so we can keep an eye on him. OK. Has anyone spoken to him about drinking whilst on Revroxaban? Yes, we have, to say, limit it. You know, to the minimum. Well, he shouldn't, anyway. He shouldn't be drinking anyway. Anyway. On the river. Yeah. Can you actually just write it? Yeah. No, I will do. With parents telling them verbally, OK, they don't take it, you know, too much. When they see a doctor with authority writing, it's OK. And hopefully he may take it more seriously. Yeah. Parents were always going to be protective over their children, no matter what age they are. And I understand that, because I think my parents are very similar. I, I, I'm bloodshed, I got, I, I got a little my Buddha. Sure. After he was 18, Hitchin went to university. But he didn't move out. Are you all right, mate? Mm -hmm. hmm? Rather... She had cancer. At that time. He thought if he stayed with mum, closer to mum, he could also look after mum. He helped a lot around the home, helped her clean the house, helped her prepare the cooking. He didn't give that a thought at all about his social life. He did sacrifice a lot of his social life. he will be giving some, or oh, ask the doctor if I, we can give you any water, but he'll be giving some liquid, yeah? Mm. He got the all clear, um, after about 12 months. And Mum, till this day, obviously still remembers that, you know. They're very close. Has he had any, any liquids, like what is he allowed? No, I've just prescribed him some fluids. OK, fine, OK. Which he'll have. All right, thank you very much. There are a lot of people who have not left home. He then doesn't want to go until he said, when I get married, it will be hard to let him go, but I'm sure he's not going to go that far. I'm very, very, very lucky to have Hidden is my son. Hey, do you have a mail space? Cool, I'm going to put somebody on there. Trauma, head injury, normal CT scan. Thanks, bye, bye. I was 27. 
27, when I left home. I speak to my mother every day on the phone, at least once. I still need her to help me with my big decisions, which is quite sad. <laughs> Hitton is being transferred to a ward where doctors will continue to monitor his condition. Kale, orange, grapefruit, ginger, lemon, lime, kiwi. Sounds lovely, John. Now it looks like it looks like something that you would pull out on abscess. That's well, very good for you. There's a drawer down there labelled alcohol form. If you fill it in, they might bring you a glass or something. Good question. Just take a nice deep breath in. Uh -huh. okay. Think about going in a spaceship or something. Mm -hmm. Sophie trapped her finger in a door on a school trip. I'll let you have a little bite there, all right? How are you feeling? A bit dizzy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Doctors are preparing to relieve the pressure caused by a buildup of blood under her nail. Brilliant, brilliant. That's all the pressure that's going, yeah? <laughs> Right from day one, she was a real strong and um, sort of sort of noisy and boisterous uh, girl. All mm -hmm. right, you're in a dreamy state. The blood's all being released from under that nail, isn't it? So yeah, I can't. Can't feel that now. It feels so weird. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You know, as they get older, you, they're individuals, you know. I mean, they, they are, they are of you, um, but, but they are their own people, and that is, you know, increasingly becoming very apparent. Oh, now my round of back handsprings are gonna never be as good, because I'll have weeks. You definitely won't be going to gymnastics. Oh, but at least I get to miss art. Art is the worst subject oh, ever. Sport. Can you turn your hand that way? That's it. Bring your finger out if you can. That's it. Perfect. Does this cost money? Mm -hmm. Or do you have insurance? Don't need it, though. It's the NHS. Yeah. Is that way they're going loads of problems because they don't have enough money? Mm-hmm. Yes. There's people causing unnecessary injuries, like slamming fingers and doors. But you can't blame that on me at no, all. I'm not. It could have just, it could have just well been you on the other side of the door, darling. Exactly. Sophie's had a fantastic last year at primary school. But, you know, suddenly they get to that point, you know, it seems to accelerate, I think. They have got to begin to look after themselves. Well done. You've been really brave today. Oh, very well. You right? Yeah, I'm fine. Obviously, it's touched with a bit of sadness, but it's part of our job to turn them into independent, self-sufficient, self-reliant, confident adults. All right, we're done. Okay. Yeah, Off all right, thanks very, right. Much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, bye-bye. Okay, Kitty, let's go. Doctors are still concerned about Kitty's high temperature. She's being transferred to paediatric A&E for further observation and treatment. This is my, lo my lovely Kitty. How's that? Under your heart or in your mouth? In your mouth. In your mouth? Okay. Close your mouth. Well done. 
What's the temperature? 39. Good, have some medicine now for your temperature, okay? Kitty, come on, sweet. I was never really scared of having another child because I knew that somehow I'd deal with it. Okay. <laughs> But, yes, it always played in the back of my mind. Um, what if you have another child with a disability? By the time I had my second child, they knew what they were looking for, and it took literally weeks for them to come back to, to us and say, she's a carrier, but she's not affected. Why, Messi, can I see you boo-boo? I have met someone else. It's a new relationship. He brought something into my life that I hadn't had. And my children absolutely adore him, and he absolutely adores my children, which is a bonus. Hi. Yes. My name's Irene, I'm one of the pediatric registrars. Hello. Hello. Can you say hello? Yeah. How are you? Oh, there we go. Look at me. And do that nice big roar for me again. Go on. Ah. Ah. Really loud. Ah. Oh, that's red. Oh, yes. Okay. That's okay, it's okay, it's okay. So a little bit of a red throat. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll have a look at the blood results and we'll keep her in tonight. Okay. If I have to care for my child till the end of my days, then that's what I will do, obviously. But I am going to give her every opportunity and more to make her do things for herself and be independent enough not to need me. My lowest time, she can put a smile on my face. I think that's such a great gift to find happiness in, in such little things in life, and she does. And I kind of learned that from her. How was the temperature? Temperature was 36. Six. So that's fine. Yay! All right. Thank you. Kitty loves camper vans. Uh, and from very early on, um, I said to her that one day that's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to buy a camper van and me and you are going to travel. And whether that is when she decides not to go to college, or when she decides to take a break between college and uni, or whenever. But one day, that's exactly what we're going to do. With netball, the first time I caught a ball, I was a bit cautious to see if my finger would hold up, but it did and it was fine. I'm quite a positive person, so I, don't, I never want to think of the worst that could happen, but possibly I, I should think like that in, in, in order to obviously change my attitude in drinking. I'm getting married next summer. She's very bubbly, she's honest and trustworthy. I, you know, I love her to pieces. It's quite scary um, knowing that you haven't got the same support as, as, as your parents at home. My parents are everything to me. I'm, I'm, I'm always going to be a little boy at the end of the day.
I wouldn't swap Kitty for a child without her condition. Because Kitty is who Kitty is. Anyone who meets Kitty falls in love with Kitty. I have a beautiful child. I have a determined child. I have a caring child. And really, as a parent, what more do you want? Don't do that. <laughs> she found it funny. <laughs> Enjoy this. Gosh, they're a three ton digger. <sighs> this might get quite serious, up to amputation. Hello, St. George's. He was on the floor. I couldn't do anything. I was feeling guilty. I thought he was going to die.